uh, this week, we're going to be um, in building on uh, this material that we've been covering on natural transformation. So topics that I'm hoping to uh, finish, uh, finish addressing today uh, as, as student uh, comfort allows. And uh, we're then going to go on to, to take this in a somewhat different direction than the uh, MIT 2020 course did. Uh, specifically, we'll be uh, building on the idea of natural transformation to talk about profunctors. And uh, profunctors um, are a topic which has manifold uh, ramifications, both within programming and software engineering, um, including notably through uh, profunctor optics for allowing us to compose modifications to uh, complex structures. Mm -hmm. And uh, also in other spheres, particularly in the modeling sphere. And we'll see that profunctors provide this general way of, of reasoning about wayfinding or about making X given Y, how to make X given Y, how much does it cost to make X given Y? What are the ways of making X given Y, et cetera? Um, they'll also provide a, a very convenient tool that kind of pops up in many areas of category theory uh, in, uh, in a way that points to its versatility. Now, before we do that, though, we have some issues to, uh, to wrap up with natural transformations. Uh, amongst them, uh, working through some of the examples which I provided uh, or the questions I provided to you about possible um, instances or not of natural transformations and discussing two types of composition for natural transformations. One, uh, horizontal composition, two, vertical composition. Hopefully we'll be able to get through that material today. So uh, just as a reminder, I'm gonna switch over to my, uh, my slides here and we'll just um, uh, offer a, a brief reminder on the essentials of natural transformation. So you'll recall that natural transformations are these structure preserving mappings uh, between functors um, and when we say structure preserving, that's captured through what's called the naturality condition. So natural transformations map from one functor to another, sort of identifying the common structure in one functor and mapping it to the common structure in the other, or to the structure in the other functor. For example, as Bartosz Milewski um, uh, memorably depicted it, we map from the head of the of the human to the head of the dog, the corresponding thing of the dog, or the, the hand of the human to the paw of the dog, the neck of the human to the neck of the dog. Uh, through a natural transformation, we capture this mapping, uh, but it's a mapping that preserves structures captured through the naturality condition. Um, so to speak in terms uh, more familiar in the computational sphere, we might, for example, have a list of ints uh, and we're interested in mapping it to a list of bools using an is negative function. But beyond that, we might be interested uh, through natural transformations in kind of a approximate mapping or a, or a compatible mapping that's represented uh, not through the list functor, but through the maybe functor. So we might have a maybe event and a maybe of bool, and we can, through lifting the is negative function, we can map from a list event to a list, excuse me, from a maybe event to a maybe of bool. And the fact that this is a natural transformation is uh, indicated by the fact and supported by the fact that uh, we have this naturality square. So uh, in some sense, the natural transformation is orthogonal to this lifting operation. Um, we can equivalently either take our list of ends, 
map is negative, lift is negative to operate on the list using fmap and map it to a list of bool, excuse me, to a list of bools, yes. And then we can use the natural transformation, say with safe head to extract from the list of bools a maybe of bool, something that's gonna be robust even if the, the list is empty, but otherwise take just of the first element. And uh, we're going to get the same results. That'll be equivalent to first mapping from the list events to the maybe event with safe head and then mapping the is negative function over this maybe event to get a maybe a bool. The fact that this is a natural transformation is indicated that this square commutes. In other words, whichever way we go around it, whether we compose these functions or these functions, we get precisely the same function that maps on the one hand from a list of events, on the other hand to a maybe of bool. We'll be guaranteed to have the same answer here. And this is something that, that falls out of the theorems for free that extends from parametric polymorphism for, uh, for the case of Haskell uh, through the adherence to a single rule applying for all types uh, associated with, with these uh, polymorphic functions that serve as the natural transformation like safe head. Uh, and it's important to note that uh, for a given natural transformation, um, it, it is only considered a natural transformation. This, this alpha is only considered a natural transformation if this condition, this naturality square applies for all morphisms F, not just for a very particular morphism like is negative, but for all of them, we have to have the same alpha A and the same alpha B and the same alpha C. These are applications of safe head say to ints or applications of safe head to bools. Uh, and there's gonna be one of these for every type that has to be the same regardless of our function F. So we call these the natural, uh, the components of the natural transformation here, one for each type in Hask and, uh, or one for each object mapped from the category C here also Hask. And collectively, those components define the natural transformation. Um, and Bartosz talks about, you know, how intuitively the, if you think about that naturality square, the natural transformation can be viewed as orthogonal to functors. Um, here we're, we have a, a functor list. Um, down here we have a functor bool. Up here it's list. And mapping a function over it, say, is negative basically maps all these elements to all those elements. Um, and it doesn't change the, the, the container, the list, but it maps each component of that list um, it, it, while retaining that overall form of the list. Uh, similarly, if we have a maybe event, we map it to a maybe a bool with, by lifting is negative to operate on maybes using fmap we uh, are going through mapping each element to the maybe, either one or zero of them, um, but we're still keeping it a maybe. By contrast, a natural transformation here is mapping from one type of container to another. Here, mapping from a list to a maybe, uh, regardless of whether we're considering this or this, et cetera. This is just mapping from a list of ints to a maybe event, Mapping from list of bulls to maybe a bull, et cetera. So um, here we're not changing the elements per se. We're certainly not changing their type. We are just uh, changing the, the container, the shape of the container from a list to a, to a maybe. Okay. Um, and um, as we'll see, um, natural transformations are needed for functors to be reasoned about as composing horizontally. Um, okay, um, so we had seen this before and we had seen that natural transformation uh, is a fairly strong condition. 
but it tells us the two functors are in some sense compatible. It isn't saying that those functors have to be identical by any means. One can be in some sense an approximation to the other. One could kind of mimic the other, but in a simplified way. And so G could kind of approximate F. Maybe it collapses down certain finer grain distinctions that F makes uh, here, collapsing down, for example, um, two of these, uh, K and H into a single object. But um, so it may, you know, coarse grain it, may, may combine together several things that are distinct uh, with functor, that are kept distinct with functor F into a single thing. But it does so in a way that's in some sense compatible in the sense that this naturality square uh, applies. That, you know, if you, do things over at F and then map down, it gives you the same answer. If you, if you sort of do the computation on the, the finer grain thing and then map over and coarse grain it, as if you coarse grain it first and do the computation over there, you get the same basic answer. Um, they are compatible. This is maybe an approximation to G. And just because there's a natural transformation from F to G does not mean there's a natural transformation from G to F. Typically, that's not going to be the case. G might be a lot cruder than F, and there's no way to map back. Uh, very common. Um, okay. So we had gone through some examples here of these, um, including some where we had... Um, we had sort of more uh more distinct uh naturality squares such as those here where we have these two functors list and maybe and this illustrates the case of which i spoke earlier it's not the only one we also had maybe maybe to list here for example uh and this is actually one where um there's a natural transformation this way as well um but there can be ones where this naturality square kind of becomes degenerate and it becomes a naturality triangle. For example, uh, this one here where we have an is nothing natural transformation. It just states whether a given maybe is, is nothing or not, regardless of the type in it. Uh, and this way we could have a maybe event and ask if that's nothing um, and get an answer. It will get be guaranteed to get the same answer. Then, if we had started with that maybe event, we mapped it to maybe a bool and then asked if it was nothing. You get the same answer. And knowing about invariants like this, or with the natural or naturality squares in general, is really quite useful in terms of program optimization or for our lab model optimization, because sometimes you could spare yourself a lot of work, such as mapping each element of a list. You can do so by first mapping it over to the simpler structure where we're only worried about at most one element. Uh, and and that's, um, that can be an advantage. Um, okay, um, uh, so I've given you some examples um, to, to think about and, and muse about and struggle with. Um, so uh, let's go through this. So um, the question here is, uh, are the following natural transformations? Um, so uh, the first was maybe to list. So here we have a maybe, and uh, this function takes in this, or excuse me, this natural transformation seeks, the question is, is there a legitimate natural transformation that would take a maybe of A uh, for any A, and turn it into a list of A, where, where basically if, if it's a just X, it'll create a singleton list. Otherwise, it'll, if it's nothing, an empty list is returned. Would this, with that rough description, would this be um, a candidate for being a natural transformation? What do you think? Yes or no?
Anyone wanna? I said yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, anyone want to disagree? Are we in a consensus? And the answer is yes. Yes, it is. And and I think I actually accidentally showed that. <laughs> Here it is. Here it is. So Wade is correct. Um, okay, so we could start with a baby event. And to give one example, though it has to hold for all morphism, as F will consider one, um, is negative. We could start with that maybe event. We could map it to, say, maybe a bool and turn that into a sing into a, a list of bool. If this may be event, it, it can be really useful in thinking, is it a natural transformation to think about a single element of it? Um, I know in category theory, we'd like to, to avoid dealing with elements, but for building up an intuition and reasoning it through, it can be useful. And particularly if you're if you're in um, the sphere of something like Hask, which has such a natural set of elements, typed elements in this case, elements of int, we could start, maybe it's a, a just of three, for example. And we could ask, is it negative? And, the, and we get just of false. And then we will say, okay, we'll run maybe the list. And what do we get out if, if we had, just a false, what do we get out here? What do we get out? We have just a false, we run maybe the list, what do we get? A singleton list of false. A singleton list of false. Yep, that's exactly what that specification said. Singleton list purely of the element X. Okay, um, uh, great. Or we could have started with that just of three. We could have run maybe the list on that. What would we get now? A list containing what? A list event containing the single value. Three. Three. And then we could, fmap is negative on that and we would get a list containing what? False. False. Yeah. So either way we go around, we get the same answer. Now, suppose this had been nothing. What would have happened then? Sorry. Yeah. If this had been nothing, what would have happened? If we had mapped, um, so it's it's nothing. It's, it's a list of events, but it's not. Oh, sorry. Maybe events, but it's nothing. So if we had it mapped as negative, what would we have gotten? Nothing. Met, nothing. Nothing we can do. I mean, like we have nothing to apply is negative to. Um, and then if we run maybe the list, what do we get out? Empty list. An empty list of an empty list. Potentially of bulls, but <laughs> yeah, potentially of bulls. That's right. It 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 has the potential of being a list of bulls. Um, it's tagged as being kind of an empty list of bulls. Okay. Alternatively, we could start with a nothing here. We map maybe to list here. We get out a what? So we have nothing. An, yeah. An empty we, list of, of int. Of int, yeah. And then we apply is negative to that. And what do we get? Empty list of bulls. Empty list of bulls. Yeah. So we get the same thing. We're happy. It's a natural transformation. Any questions about that before we go on to the next one? Okay, not hearing any, I'll, I'll go on to the next one. I'll take that as a, no. Um, we'll go on to the next one. So, uh, pardon me, I'm just going to turn down the heat here for a second. I'll, I'm going to tone down the light as well, but the, the heat is blasting a little bit too uh, uh, too strong. I'm going to turn down the light. Okay, come on. One more. One more. Hey. Okay, well, 
Uh, okay, well, it's a little bit, a little bit better. Um, okay, Valtelis. So this is actually emblematic of this whole class of these natural transformations. This is a natural transformation. Okay, I spoil it. Sorry. This is a natural transformation. Sorry, I let the cat out of the bag. It's a natural transformation that comes up a lot in the context of anyone want to guess? It's a very particular context we discussed in the discussion group. Haven't discussed here. It's of great importance in functional programming. I'll give you a hint. List is not only a functor, it's a, begins with M. It ends with D. It is an N in the middle. <laughs> monad. It's a monad. It's a, it's a monad. This is a monad, actually. And this is unit of a monad. So it's, and, and what may confuse you is, this is the identity natural transformation on the left, okay? Uh, <coughs> we just met. <coughs> A to A, okay. Um, and on the right, we have the, excuse me, excuse me. Uh, this is identity functor that we've applied to this. And it's mapping to the list functor, which is a monad as well. And uh, when we have these, um, in general, we have uh, these things called ADA, you may or may not remember it, um, which go, for example, from the identity functor to a to a functor associated with the monad here, a, a functor, um, a t, um, t is the monad. Um, it maps from like A to list A. This kind of injects, sometimes it's called pure, it injects this element A into the list. In this case, it's the it's the empty list. It kind of generalizes it into a list, this, this single element. If we think of per Paolo Paroni's uh, characterization, monads as kind of generalized values. We create a singleton list of these. Uh, instead of just dealing with one stinking value, we can deal with multiple such values of the list. And here is kind of our, our entry point. Um, we have a, we have eta, we have the unit of the monad. And it turns out this serves as unit when it comes to uh, mono the monoidal operations in the category of endofunctors. We covered that once in the discussion group, um, but I don't think I'll inflict it on you this uh, class. Um, but anyway, this is a natural transformation. So uh, I think, uh, yeah, here we go. So we could start with an end and we could map it with is negative to be a bool. And then we could eject that into a list and we'll get a list of just that bool. Or we could have taken that in, we could have ejected that into a list, just get a singleton list of end and map it with is negative to get a singleton list of bool. Um, and either way, we're gonna get the same end that we started with, with which we started in this, uh, uh, it, it mapped with his negative in this list here. Well, regardless, you know, it, if it's if it's negative, this would be false. A single single to list of false. If this were positive, it would be a single to list of true. Okay. So so this is a natural. How about list to val? Given a list of type A, return the value at the head of a list. Is that a natural transformation? What could go wrong here?
what could go wrong here? Well, can anyone see something that could go wrong? Um, I think an empty list. Yeah, an empty list is not handled here. And in general, with an empty list, I'd, I'd have to formalize this, but I think if we had an empty list, and I was looking to, in, hope, in vain hopes that I could, could find a case which had a nice picture. I actually don't have a picture specifically for this. But if we had an empty list, um, th there's not even a mapping that we could perform to get uh, a, a morphism that would get this, um, uh, get this, well, okay, there's, there exists exactly one sort of nullary, uh, right, because from void to any type, void is the initial object, uh, uh, but that's, this is not void. Uh, yeah, so, so I don't think actually there's, there's going to be a mapping, a total function, which is gonna take all possible values of this, including the empty one, and give us an A. It's not going to be defined for what it is. This is not a total function. So th there's not there's not going to be a way to take it from an empty list into an A. It we can't have essentially a component here mapping when this is is list because uh, it's not defined, it's not a total function. It doesn't handle all possible values here. It doesn't handle empty lists. So this is not a natural transformation. There exists no such value, no such components that are total functions, meaning that they work for all possible values of this or all possible values. So if this is like, uh, let's, let's try this. If this were, uh, uh, come on, um, list event, and this were list of bools. Um, we can't extract via total function, uh, including for empty lists. We can't extract anything. No, nope, cannot do. So, so this is is not a natural transformation. It's not well defined enough. Uh, um, to be a natural transformation. I don't even think there's a naturality square. So there's just no, no uh, function that in general will, will map this to this and this to this. So these two are disconnected basically um, uh, from each other. Now you could say, well, wait, couldn't you fix it up? Like use a, a dumb value of, you know, a sentinel value of A, but the problem is this has to be true for any type A. How are you gonna conjure up out of thin air an A out of nothing? You know, um, that's, that's not in general gonna be possible. Um, you know, this could be any type. Um, we can't just say, we'll put minus one there or something like that. Um, so in general, this is, it's not a natural transformation. Okay, how about this one? <laughs> um, stir valve to list. Okay, so this looks innocuously like this one that was a natural transformation. This is a back unit. This is a unit for the list monad. Okay, given a value of type A, where A is not a string, return a singleton list consisting of only that value. But if A is a string, if the given string reads empty in you know, that, that lexeme or, that, uh, or that, that, that exact string empty returns an empty list. It sort of peeks inside this list and it says, aha, you know, they wanna, 
They want an empty list. Um, otherwise, return a singleton list consisting of only the given string. So um, in other words, if A is not string, we do the normal thing. If A is string, if it's this value empty, we'll return an empty list. Otherwise, we'll just um, uh, we'll just have a singleton, you know, a singleton element of that string. Is this a natural transformation? I said no, because okay. it treats string differently than every other type. Yeah, it's exactly. an ad hoc polymorphism. It's ad hoc polymorphism. So. So if we had, and, and again, I apologize, I didn't have the time to, to create this, but if we had a, um, uh, a yeah, and unfortunately, um, I don't, um, uh, no, here we, here we go. This is probably the, the closest thing. If we had, um, if we had, if this were string, imagine this were string, um, and this were, say, leave it as bull. Okay, fine. Uh, if this were string, um, you know, converting it, and the string said, quote, empty, then we could map it over and we get an empty list. And then we could apply uh, an empty list of string. And then we could apply, you know, is non zero length something that maps strings, you know, lift something that maps strings to bools. We could, we could lift uh, is non-zero length using fmap to map from an empty list of strings into an empty list of bools, okay? Alternatively, we could have taken this original string that says empty um, and we map it directly with this thing is zero length and we get false um, or what I said um, is not zero length uh, is um, I'll say is 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 zero length um, and, and we get false and then we could in using unit using you said that sort of natural trend that fake natural transformation the pretender to no natural transformation rule we could take this um false and we could inject it at a list and we'll get a singleton list of false so if you go around this way you get a singleton list that's empty because it kind of peeked inside the list and it applied it at this ad hoc rule for strings I'm sorry, peeked inside the string and spotted it. And so it had an empty, an empty list of bools. This way, it's a non-empty list of bools. It's something that has the this value false in it. Um, and, and those aren't the same. So that is not a natural transformation. It's an unnatural transformation. And it is most unseemly as well. Any questions about that? Maybe you can get a sense why mathematicians consider them unhealthy ad hocery. You know, like this is, it's kind of a hack. It's kind of a kludge. It's, it's uh, uh, it kind of makes you, you know, um, gives you bad smells. Um, okay. Um, okay, are the following natural transformation? Memoize, uh, okay. This is something that takes a function from a natural to an A. And it's natural to be zero, one, two, three, uh, to any type A. And it turns it into a stream of uh, values of A. This a stream is, is uh, of unbounded length. So there's however long you go, you can get yours. Is this a natural transformation? Yes or no? What do you think?
All we're doing is we're compiling this down into this stream. The ith element of the stream will be obtained by where, where it starts at zero, will be obtained by, by just plugging in a high here and getting an A back. What do you think? Is that a natural transformation? The answer is anyone? Yes, it is a natural transformation. Now, now we can do this for any type that we, by lifting functions, we map from this being a natural of, 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 of A going to A to be a natural going to B. Uh, we lift it with a function that goes from A to B, thereby we can get something that's, so if we, need something that goes from natural to B, we can map it. We can basically take a function from A to B, uh, give it, and, and that will allow us to then make use of this, natural of A, produce an A, we map it with the function, produce a B, we get a big mapping from a, a natural to, to B. It's, it's all very nice. Yeah, to look up. To look up, ladies and gentlemen, takes it's just the opposite of this. It takes a stream and it basically creates a function, a closure that kind of looks the value up. What do you think? Is that a natural transformation? I I was kind of uncertain, but what I said was no, because you could propose a stream sequence that can't be represented by a function like Did for that, example maybe the digits of a, a, a rational number oh that's 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 really interesting um okay that's that's really interesting so you're thinking sort of along the lines of good or incompleteness proof or turing's diagonalization argument or a nat natural number yeah that's irrational number yeah that's that's an intriguing idea. Uh, and I, I give you extra credit for creativity there. That's, that's neat. It turns out it is natural. Mm -hmm. it, it, it is natural. So, so for any stream, we can always cr create a function that instead says, hey, give me a natural number, zero, one, two, three, 10, whatever. Take that natural number and I'll secretly look it up in the stream. I'll go from you know each successive element to that number. Elements, I'll, I'll throw away element zero, one, two, three, uh, go find it. Okay, that's the number and I'll give it back to you. Um, so the stream lists these things and we can always just kind of look them up within this closure. Um, and this, this function job in life is, is to just, translate from this to this by looking it up in, in this stream that they get that index, this index. So actually this stream just sort of compiles, it's, it's just the kind of secret lookup key for this function. So it turns out to be oh, okay. Um, it, it is in fact, okay. This just basically tells us what's in each successive element of this stream. It's an interesting question why that's, you can't, um, I, can't I don't have to really think of some sort of diagonalization argument could be, could be made, uh, but I don't think it wouldn't jeopardize that. Um, okay, pair to list. So here we have a pair. Um, and the question is, Given a pair of these values, the same type A, can we um, can we create a singleton list consisting of only of the first one? What do you think? Uh, 
Anyone? What are you unsure about? What's your perplexity? What, what does it reflect? I think it is. I, I just kind of, I don't want, I want to give the others a chance to answer some of these. Anyone? I, I, uh huh. Huh? Anyone else want to speak up? Um, my answer is also yes for this. So. Yeah, it, it is. It does hinge on what FMAP means for this. Because, like, if you have something where this is F, like a pair, you, you want. Like you don't want the mapping of his negative to only apply to the second argument or something like that. So like assuming that kind of mapping of the pair, map both elements of the pair to both be Bs, um, uh, then, then, you know, going like this uh, as a pair over, this would be along the top going like this as a pair along the top would map like an AA, so something of a pair of A comma A, not necessarily the same value, but both are from type A, map it over to a pair of BB, where B is another type of two values of B. And then we could run the natural transformation, extract only the first, or we could have extracted the first here and then then applied that map only on the the list of uh, this list, uh, and we'd be fine. So yeah, this is this is actually a natural transformation. How about this one? This is very similar to one we saw earlier. What is this not handling? The empty list. Empty list. It's not handling the empty list. Really, there's no total function from that that has been specified from here. We haven't specified a total function from from sort of the that that list of a to I guess we could have uh, mumble. We could have mumble. Uh, we could have. We didn't have a total function here, um, and so it. It's a nice idea, but it there's no total function there. We haven't defined the natural L least square because it doesn't have those nice components, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it doesn't work. How about list to maybe pair? As long as our lifting of this would map each of these elements within the maybe, yeah, this this actually does does work. We could have mapped a list of ints to be a list of bools, uh, and then turned it into a maybe of bool bool, or we could have mapped map the list of ints to be using the natural transformation into a maybe event and um, which is nothing if this thing isn't at least two. Otherwise it's the first two elements. Uh, and and then we could have mapped that over as long as it's mapping both of these. We're uh, we're okay. We're okay. We're it's okay. Okay, how about this one? Is empty. So this one just says, is this list, um, uh, yeah, is this list empty? Um, 
if, if the list is empty, return true, otherwise let return false. What do you think? Is that a natural transformation? This should remind you of something. It's a lot like this. Sorry. Uh, yeah, this is an, a lot like this one. So here, you have a natural transformation that went from maybe to bool. That's, remember, natural transformations map from one functor to another. It maps here from the maybe functor. This is the constant functor bool. Uh, in our case, instead of this being maybe, we have list. And so is empty just maps it. So it's, it's mapping natural transformation seeks to be a mapping from list of A to bool. And that's okay. It just says it's empty. Because mapping a list event to be a list of bool doesn't change whether it's empty or not. We we could have mapped here and then asked if it's empty, or we could have asked if it's empty originally and they commute. I'm sure we can map the the elements of the list. It doesn't change whether it's empty or not, and therefore, you know, we always will get back to the same answer. So that one is an actual transformation. Okay, this is this is the probably the most textured one. This required some thinking on my part. Representation size. Okay, I this is kind of painful to write, honestly. Um uh so uh a to maybe a integer given a value of type a. If that value is a bounded size, returns just of an integer, specify the size in bytes. Otherwise, if it's unbounded size, return nothing. So here it's actually, you notice on the right-hand side, we don't have, like most of these, we have A's on both sides, right? A, 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 A. Yeah, A, 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 A. But here, uh, it's empty, we didn't, we have bool on the right. This is constant functor, bool. This is constant functor for maybe integer. It's, everything's mapped to a maybe integer. Okay. Um, so actually I said, I take that back. It's not constant functor, maybe integer. It can't be. And there's a reason for that. Okay. Is this a natural transformation? On the exercise, I said yes, but I'm starting to have doubts because I think, like, if you, like, say you say you did an is negative on a and then did this it would give you the size of a bool not the size of an integer right right so you can't right you, you can't you can't map it over uh exactly like if you apply a function it changes the result uh, yeah the result that's exactly right so suppose we start with an end I like your example. And you said, is it, so suppose this were an int. I wish I had a nice, okay. Um, yeah, here. We've mapped it to is negative. Okay. Kind of like a combination of this and the previous diagram. So we had n, we can map it with is negative to be a bool. Uh, and we can map that down to representation size and we should get like, you know, one byte. Or we could have, we could have 
mapped it down originally and let's suppose gotten four bytes or something, whatever the representation size of a capital I int is. And if this were a triangle where F mapping maybe of int with a function that maps from, oh, maybe of integer, the function that maps from int to bool. If that just were identity as it is, let's say for, for this is nothing. Here, this is just identity. Every other function like is negative is mapped to the identity function here. That's what a constant function does. Every morphism mapped by this constant. So every object mapped by the constant function goes to this object. Every morphism mapped by the constant function goes to the identity function, to the identity morphism on that object. Ooh. Um, and that works fine here because mapping types doesn't change their, whether or not they're nothing in this case, mapping a maybe doesn't, from maybe event to maybe bool doesn't change whether it, it's nothing. Mapping a, a maybe a list event to a list of bool doesn't change whether or not it's empty too, for that other example. But it would change its representation size to map from an int to a bool. And so we can't map with the constant function. The constant function by definition maps all objects to a single object, all morphisms uh, to, to that identity morphism. And that wouldn't work because we'd be saying an int is the same size as a bool. You know, going along the top of the triangle, we map an int to a bool. And then if we said, what's the representation size, we get one thing. That's a different answer than if we had just asked, what's the representation size of the int? So we'd have to map not with a constant functor, but a functor that would somehow map a function from A to B to a morphism that would turn representation sizes of an A into representation sizes of a B. Like we'd need to turn a, 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 the lifting of, of like is negative would need to turn a, a four into a one because we're mapping for the representation size of an int to the representation size of a bool. It would need to do that. And that isn't something which a, a normal maybe of integer is designed to do you. So if we were mapping an int to a bool, it, it couldn't even apply. How would we F map it? Like it, it there's nothing to, to F map here. There's no A to F map here. So anyway, it, it wouldn't work play nicely with this normal lifting of a function to maybe with F map. Um, could we define it conceptually in category theory? Yeah, we could. Oh, uh, that'd be a kind of fun thing, but um, at least by, by my standards. But um, uh, but that's that's not something which we're gonna get just kind of falling out by declaring it as that um, using using this type. Okay. Any questions about any of those? Any questions? That was quite a list. 11 natural transformations and otherwise. Okay, so um, the next thing I'm, I'm not, I'm actually not gonna cover it in any sort of detail. My, my goal was to just to use Brendan Fong's way of expressing it to get you familiar with these things in the landscape of category theory. I just wanted to note that 
when you have natural transformations, you you actually start to get what I think technically I forget whether it's a double category or two category, but it one is more specialized version of the other. You have two types of of trans of, of mappings um, associated with uh, mappings uh, uh, with composition of natural transformations. You have vertical composition and horizontal composition. We'll be seeing something kind of like this when it comes to dynamical systems in a talk by David Jazz Myers on that course on polynomial functors, whose lectures will be coming up. But there's two ways. One is what's called a vertical transmission of natural transformations. So natural transformations are mappings between functors. And it's very, like if we, if we think about it, we have functors and we have mappings between them. And if we're thinking about category theory, we should be asking, well, okay, if we have mappings between these things, is there an identity mapping between a functor? And the answer is yes, there's an identity natural transformation that maps C to C. Um, and uh, it, it's natural. I mean, when we lift F, it's just F itself. And, and it just the, the components on astral transformation just map A to A or B to B, et cetera. So um, there is, and, and uh, it turns out that there's this category of functors where each object is a functor and each morphism is a natural transformation. Great. And this is very straightforward thing with called a vertical composition of, of of natural transformation. Um, uh, and it's kind of like in, in software engineering, it's like a composition of parametrically polymorphic functions mapped to two categories. So for example, um, it, you, could, you could have a um, uh, here, right. Um, you could have a pair to list. Um, going from a, a pair of these to a list of A, or a safe A going from a list of A to maybe of A, and you could compose them uh, so that you get something which goes from uh, the pair of these two to a list, and then a list to a maybe, and therefore composes it to be from this one to this one. This is kind of a, a straightforward idea, and it looks kind of like this. We have two categories, this is important, two categories C and D, and we have three functors between them. It's gonna be quite different than from natural transformation and just uh, from horizontal uh, composition of natural transformation. So we have C and D, we have three functors perform between them, F, G, and H. And we have a natural transformation from F to G. And this is one of the things I'm saying, it's, it's useful to pop up a level you know that going from F to G involves all these naturality squares, all these, these components, but here we're just trying to get, it's like a mapping from F to G. It's a structure preserving mapping between functors, just as a functor is a structure preserving mapping between categories. Here, categories have been reduced to a dot, right? And a functor to an arrow and a natural transformation to its own sort of double arrow. So we can go from F to G, great. We can go from G to H, great. And that allows us by composing them, beta after alpha, just like composing these two, these two parametrically polymorphic functions, we can go from F to H. Mm. That's vertical composition of natural transformations. Oh. And, um, you notice that both of these are, are all these functors, F, G, and H, are mapping from category C to category D. All of them are, are mapping. So that's called vertical trans, uh, composition of natural transformations. And you may say, well, what, what other type of composition could there possibly be? To paraphrase Eugenia Leon. Um, uh, Eugenia. Chung, excuse me. Um, uh, 
So horizontal composition of natural transformations is an entirely different beast. Um, horizontal composition uh, basically is dealing with a situation where we have three categories, C and D, and we have a pair of functors between them that have a natural transformation alpha. And D and E, categories D and E, where we have a natural transformation, pair of natural, excuse me, a pair of functors G and G prime with a natural transformation between them, beta. And so before we were just dealing with kind of three functors between C and D and vertically um, composing those. Here we're dealing with three categories, C and D, D and E. And we have these kind of, uh, we have a, a natural transformation here and a natural transformation here. Notice these natural transformations are for functors between uh, pair of functors going from the same category to the same source to the same target, the same, they have the same source category and the same target categories each other. So G and G prime, F and F prime. But we're asking here, can we compose in some sense Bait this natural transformation with this one to get a mapping from the composition of these functors, G after F will go from C to E. And can we map that composition of G after F to be the composition of G prime after F prime? After all, you can, functors can compose. They're just mapping of objects and mappings of morphisms that are structure preserving. Um, and, and the question is, okay, if we can comp compose these, get a morphism here, and we can compose these two and get a morphism here from C to E, is there a principled way of combining this natural transformation and that one to map from this to this? And the answer is, yes, there is. There's a natural transformation induced between this and this that's called beta after alpha in this way. Now, the confusing thing is, and I don't want you to particularly worry about this too much, but you should know that this is different. Excuse me. This one is with this big open dot. This one is with this tiny little dot, OK? This is vertical transmission. This is. Sorry, <laughs> not, not vertical transmission. Sorry, vertical transmission is where an infectious disease is transmitted from the mother to the uh, unborn baby. That's not what we are referring to here. This is <laughs> vertical composition of natural transformations. I'm getting ahead of myself for my next meeting, I guess. Um, so this is horizontal composition of natural transformations. Okay, and these are two different quantities. And it turns out that, um, you know, to reason about composition of functors, you need natural transformations. That's what I was saying in one of my opening slides. To reason about horizontal composition of, of functors, you need to, to, to think about these natural transformations. Um, so vertical transmission, where we map from functor to functor and we can compose these, um, and horizontal transmission, transmission, composition, where we go from uh, C to D, we go from D to E, and we turn it into a, a functor that goes from C to E, and we can define that with horizontal composition and therefore compose them. And this is actually a rather, um, um, a rather significant uh, task to follow through. And as you can see, I did it um, uh, to, for, for, for your sake um, in the discussion group. Uh, and, and it has its functional programming analog, uh, which is, is rather beautiful. And it turns out that um, if you have special cases where, for example, these two f is the same as f prime that's what this is or or g is the same as g prime but the other is different uh you get these um you get these kind of special cases 
Uh, so as, as Bartosz pushed it, alpha is lifted versus beta is shifted. And you may under, wonder like, why would you possibly come up with this? Well, it turns out that this does become relevant for monads in the context of monads. Um, these things actually pop out. And if you go back and you look at my slides on certain monad laws and so on, for certain cases, you'll actually see these kind of identities come, come up, including these ones here. Um, uh, and it's a little bit of an exercise. But for now, I just want you to be aware of this, that there's vertical and horizontal composition. And we will see that again in David Jazz Meyer's uh, lecture um, on, on the double categories associated with uh, dynamical systems. Okay, so um, we're over time. Uh, I'd like you to, for Wednesday, two days from now, for our next class, to look over pro um these two videos, okay? Um, uh, and uh, you'll notice each one of them, it's a partial video, and therefore I've marked it with the time. If you could watch those, we'll have a lot of fun with pro um, We're going to see um, how they make sense of some of that contravariance. We'll see how they beautifully allow us to reason about wayfinding. And we'll see that they can provide this kind of general vehicle um, for reasoning about how to make B given A. Um, and reason about how much it costs to make B given A, or whether we can make B given A, or ways to make B given A. Um, Profunctors provide us that, that key link. So that's for Wednesday. We'll spend a couple of lectures on that uh, because it's going to be such a rich set of material and a set of material that has practical programming implications uh, as well as implications for modeling. So, that is all for today. I do have to apologize. Normally I have my office hours now, but uh, because City Hall has asked me to send down uh, some analysis of some scenarios, um, I'm gonna have to attend to that now. There was a bit of a snafu over the weekend and uh, the results are just available just before class. I have to go compile them and send them down to City Hall and, and uh, do a, a bunch of uh, description. So uh, we're not gonna be able to have office hours now. Instead, Christine informs me that they've had scheduled for right after class on Wednesday. And uh, my apologies for the shift in schedule, but um, I think uh, we'll be rewarded likely by a city hall vote um, for a safer community for all of us. Thank you very much. Take care there. Thank you.